So OpenAI had their Dev Day event yesterday, and I usually try to avoid these types of AI news or recap videos, as there's a million of these gurus online saying how everything's insane, oh my God, you're behind, right? And I never wanna be bucketed into that crowd, which is why I don't usually do these types of videos. But after watching the keynote and kind of reading up on all of these updates that OpenAI is coming out with, with Agent Kit and Apps and ChatGPT in particular, I wanted to do a quick video kind of explaining what these are and also just give you my thoughts on where this is going and all the potential implications that this has. So be sure to stick around for the full video. And if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. My name is Ryan and I help executives and founders leverage AI to scale content, save time, and build a strong personal brand online. And if you want to know my favorite AI tools, prompts, and automation templates, be sure to get my free AI marketing essentials guide. You can find the link for this in the video description or pinned comment below. So I'm not going to bore you with all the little details about OpenAI's Dev Day. I will leave a link to this page and also the full keynote in the video description below. But the first thing I did want to talk about here is OpenAI introducing applications natively inside ChatGPT's interface via MCP. If I pull up ChatGPT, I'm logged into my Plus account here and I hit the app button. Notice how there are now official integrations for Booking.com, Canva, Coursera, Expedia, Figma, Spotify, Zillow. Speaking of Spotify, this actually reminded me of a video that I did talking about ChatGPT plugins when those were around. That's a throwback. If you guys remember plugins, leave me a comment below. I feel ancient now even talking about that. But I did want to mention plugins because that's what this seems like. It seems like a revamped version of ChatGPT plugins. And I don't know. I know some people are saying this is the new Apple App Store. I think there's a lot more promise here than there were with plugins. There's no doubt about that. That was a bust. But if you look at the GPT store, for instance, there was a lot of hype around that saying GPT creators or the top ones are going to get a lot of revenue. I literally heard nothing about anyone making money from GPTs inside the GPT store. Most people were selling these outside of OpenAI's ecosystem. And so I don't know what to expect with OpenAI adding these apps uh, inside the interface and people are going to be able to create their own. There's just a lot that could happen here, but it is a big shakeup for sure. And in terms of these official you know, apps that are already available, they are adding more soon. So there's 11 more partners in the works here with Target, OpenTable, DoorDash, Uber. That could be very interesting. TripAdvisor uh, and all these other ones here soon. They talk about how to build apps uh, with the apps SDK. Um, so yeah, there's some other information. I'll leave this link in the description below as well. But if we pull up ChatGPT and let's just call Canva, for instance, what you would do to actually use this is call whatever app you want. And then I'm gonna say something like, generate me an infographic I can use for my personal brand on social media that is optimized for LinkedIn. I'm just thinking of a super simple example here just to show you what this looks like. So it's gonna to connect to the application. It's gonna ask for some sort of authentication where I'm gonna to have to sign into my Canva account. Yeah, so ChatGPT wants to connect to Canva. So click continue. Then you're gonna get this message here, continue to Canva. And then it's going to take me to Canva's website. I'm just going to log in with my Google account here really quickly. And so click continue, blah, 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 right? All of this fun stuff. And it's going to say Canva connector would like to access your Canva account. Click allow to use this authorization successful. So now it's going to take me back to chat GPT and then it should go ahead and actually help me and finish this prompt here. So I'm going to skip ahead and wait till this is done. All right, so after about 30 seconds, the Canva app generated these infographics inside ChatGPT. By no means are these perfect. I definitely wouldn't post these on my platform, um, but let's say this is a good start, for instance, where you could click open in Canva on the top right, and this will take you to Canva, where I can now edit this infographic in Canva's interface, download it, and then make whatever updates I want from here. Or I could come back and reprompt it in ChatGPT's interface and then take it to Canva and go from there. So you see where this is going, right? I mean, it's not perfect. Definitely is better than the plugins or even the GPTs that Canva, for instance, came out with. But some other use cases here, like Spotify, right? Let's say I want a playlist. If I'm hosting a Halloween party that's relevant, it went ahead and generated this 20 song spooky Halloween party playlist for me after I successfully logged into my Spotify account and then integrated it from there. Another real world example here is let's say I want to find houses in Des Moines, Iowa 
using the Zillow application. Well, it went ahead and pulled that up right inside ChatGPT's interface. I didn't even have to log into an account because in Zillow, I don't think they make you create an account just to do some research. Uh, so that's really cool. And then it went ahead and found all of these different houses uh, using the Zillow app integration with my criteria under 500,000, at least four bedrooms. And then I can go ahead and click on this and it's, I'm still in the chat GPT interface, which is really cool. So I really like the Zillow app integration. This is probably the most robust one that I've seen yet, um, but I like the direction of where this is going. So I do think that out of all these updates, I think OpenAI introducing apps natively in chat GPT, it's gonna be a lot more successful, at least from what I'm seeing so far than plugins or the GPT store, but it's to be determined of course. Now, before I dive into Agent Kit, which I think is the biggest update from Dev Day, I wanted to quickly go over some of these API updates. We have Sora 2 in the API. That is a big deal, in my opinion. We have a GPT Real Time Mini, so it's a less expensive voice model. GPT 5 Pro in the API. This one I really find interesting. GPT Image 1 Mini is now in the API, a model that's 80% less expensive than the GPT Image 1 larger model. So I do use GPT Image 1 in a few of my automations, so I'm actually very interested by that. But first, let's talk about Sora 2 in the API. If I look at the pricing for Sora Video API, I noticed that Sora 2 Pro, which is OpenAI's most advanced AI video model right now, costs 50 cents per second. Now, if you do a lot with APIs from just a pure API pricing perspective, that is very expensive. But if you compare it to commercials, if you compare it to launch videos or any other types of videos that cost millions and millions of dollars to produce, 50 cents per second is not that much in the scheme of things. Now, the X factor here is quality. Does Sora 2 Pro produce these million dollar, you know, millions of dollars level worth of commercials or launch videos that move the needle? I would argue no right now, but this is getting better as time goes on. And so it'll be very interesting to see all these AI SaaS tools that come out of the woodwork and start using Sora 2 Pro API to power them and to see what comes from that. That's what I'm keeping my eye on here. What are some AI video SaaS tools that are gonna pop out of the woodwork that's powered by Sora 2 Pro? So just something to keep your eye on there. And speaking of Sora, I finally did get access to Sora 2 about time. I do have three invite codes left. The first three people that comment below, comment Sora invite, I will give you an invite code. So just wanted to call that out and I will be making a future video on Sora 2. But those are just some quick updates related to the APIs. Now, the biggest update coming out of OpenAI's Dev Day is the introduction of Agent Kit. Now, Agent Kit is a complete set of tools for developers and enterprises to build, deploy, and optimize agents. We haven't heard the term AI agent enough in 2025 so far this year, have we? And now OpenAI definitely wants a piece of this. This is comprised of three things, agent builder, connector registry, and chat kit. And I'll leave a link to this if you guys wanna look at this for more details. But the big thing to know here is the introduction of this agent builder. This is what it looks like. And it looks very familiar, doesn't it? To N8N, Zapier, Make.com, Gumloop, insert AI automation platform. So OpenAI now wants a piece of the pie when it comes to building AI automations. And in order to access this and start using Agent Builder, you need to go inside OpenAI's API platform at platform.openai.com. You have to sign up for a free account, click dashboard, and you should notice Agent Builder on the left-hand side right here. They have a bunch of templates you can use, data enrichment, planning helper, customer service, and I'm sure they're gonna add more as time goes on, or we can create a workflow from scratch. And this is what it looks like here. Here is an AI agent that I can now configure. And I'll be honest with you guys, I do need to spend more time in this agent builder platform so I can properly build a workflow that's actually applicable in the real world and not just some random agent that people are creating just to get quick videos out on agent builder. I would rather focus and make something that's actually practical. So I do need to spend more time so I can go in and build an effective workflow here. But I just wanna quickly show you what you can do right now with this agent builder. You can give your agent a name, you can give it instructions, you can include your chat history, you can alter the model, so GPT-5, 4.0, 03, 4.1, et cetera. But that's something important to call out here is that people are saying that Agent Builder is gonna kill N8N, it's gonna kill Zapier, 
But let's say you don't like OpenAI's AI models. Maybe you want to use Claude's models. Maybe you want to use Gemini models or Grox models. You are not able to do that inside OpenAI's agent builder. And it makes sense. They want to keep everything within their ecosystem. So that is definitely a downside here. Now, the other thing too, you can change reasoning effort, minimal, low, medium, high. What's also cool about this though, is you can add tools via MCP. So notice how there's an MCP server right here, client tool, file search, web search, code interpreter. Uh, you can get pretty granular here, but if we do MCP server, uh, I did a video on this about a week ago talking about how you can now use ChatGPT developer mode to sync up Zapier MCP and connect with thousands of different applications. So this is definitely making some strides here as we're, we can now add MCP servers inside OpenAI's agent builder. But just like anything that OpenAI comes out with, I just wanna call this out too, the first iteration always sucks. We saw this with Sora. The first version of Sora was terrible. The first version of Dolly was terrible. ChatGPT uh, you know, plugins, those were terrible. GPTs were terrible when they first came out. So there still is a lot of work for them to be done in terms of making Agent Builder a reliable alternative to take people away from N8N, take people away from Make.com or Zapier. I'm gonna keep using Make.com. I'm not gonna shift all of my automations and workflows over to OpenAI's Agent Builder and start going from there. I do need to learn this though for the sake of this YouTube channel and you guys watching, but in terms of my actual systems and processes for my business, I'm not gonna be using this anytime soon. There's some kinks, there's just some other limitations with using OpenAI's models here. Um, and it's also a, a new learning curve for me as well. So I don't wanna spend that time to take away from what I already have inside make.com, automating my social media, automating other things related to content or marketing for my clients, right? So I just wanted to call that out too. But I do think Agent Builder is definitely a big deal. And this has some serious, serious implications when it comes to the AI automation world. And I do expect this to get better as time goes on. So those are some of my quick thoughts on OpenAI's Dev Day. I do think the integration of apps inside ChatGPT's interface and Agent Builder have some really big implications as time goes on. I wanna hear your guys' thoughts though about OpenAI's new updates. Let me know in the comments below. And if you've made it this far into the video, I truly appreciate you. Be sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, I hope you all have a great day.